scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Set our hearts on you so you will do what you do. We're in a mood. This is a move. We need a move. We're in a move. So here's where I start my journey. I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Congratulations. Let's do a recap on what I taught you the last time. That the greatest need of an unbeliever is what? salvation if you buy a house for an unbeliever you feed him well done but it will not take him to heaven the greatest need anytime you see an unbeliever the greatest need for that unbeliever is salvation is that true he has passed the first gate when it comes to the second gate he's now saved is that true what is the greatest need for a believer transformation what is transformation the process that makes you like christ in experience Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you like Christ in experience. In all his power, in all his glory, the fullness of himself. Transformation. How do you know you are transformed? When your thinking and your understanding and your belief systems begin to subscribe to the word of God. That's how you measure transformation. You don't measure transformation by the vastness of information you are receiving. You can receive many useless spiritual information. Doesn't mean you are transformed. You have to gauge your transition based on the reference of scripture. To what degree has your entire life submitted to the ways of God in experience? That is the degree to which you are transformed. So the greatest need of a believer is transformation. And can I tell you, it takes a long time of partnership with the Holy Spirit and the Word to bring transformation. This is the probably the hardest of a believer's journey to a life of excellence and a life that represents the purposes of God. Transformation. In one minute you can be saved. Do you agree with me? Because it's not something you did on your own part. The moment you accept Jesus Christ, the Bible says that you are saved. So it does not take anything to be saved. But I wish transformation, you just say, Lord, I believe I'm transformed. Then you jump. No. Transformation is a long period. For many, it will take decades. The first thing that happens, maybe I should digress a bit and explain to you how transformation happens. The first thing that happens is not receiving new information the first thing that happens is deconstructing the negative devilish ideas that have come from culture that have come from our pasts that have come from the limitations of territory and do you know why it's difficult because you will not want to leave it that's all you've known all your life so now when the holy spirit brings a superior proposition to your life how then do you give up what you've held all your life you were trained based on that knowledge you have lived based on that knowledge it's called status quo you have developed a system of comfort now here comes the word of god proposing to you a superior idea 
higher than all you've known higher than all you've learned it's not something you it takes a level of yieldedness you see that and because god will not usurp your will even though he's god almighty he will not veto and say whether you like it or not he will move at the pace of your cooperation is that true so he begins to expose to you god's ways in the area of spiritual growth he shows you how this thing happens in the kingdom now he teaches you about purpose and destiny now he teaches you about finances now he teaches you about your family he teaches you about the reality of demons the realm of the spirit i set before you life and what death i set before you blessing and cursing you would think it should be obvious that any right thinking person should naturally think pick blessings but it's not so not so not so it's like i drop um a plate of food is that true and i drop poison and i say pick one you will think it should be very natural to come and pick a plate of food you try it and see the options that people will choose you don't choose with your hands you choose with your mind your hand only obeys what your mind has chosen your body only gravitates towards the direction of your belief system you have to understand that the body is an executor of your belief systems the body moves to honor your belief system if your body moves left it was your belief system that brought it there if your body moves right it was your belief system that moved it there if you are poor and broke and suffering it's not your job it's not your hands it's your mind that kept it that way if you are experiencing the favor of god and the goodness of god it was your mind in partnership with the holy spirit if you live an excelling life is the spirit of god in partnership with your mind are you following please this is very important so it says if these things be in you and abound and stay why because remember in the parable of the sower satan was watching as God was about to sow seeds the seed the Bible says is the heart of men is that true I mean the seed is the word the soil the heart of men so when the word is about to come don't think you are the only one paying attention Satan is also paying attention what information is God bringing to your destiny he's bringing an information that passion towards God provides profit for your destiny he listens as soon as that word drops immediately he will come and attempt to pick it let me tell you how you know that there have been seeds that the devil has been picking in your life ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth have you seen people like that no matter what you want to talk about i know genesis chapter ah, 1 verse 28 deuteronomy 8 verse 18 joshua 1 verse 8 john 1 5 i know in fact from he's not only he's going to go to he'll see how four six just be watching the question is what is happening to your life now listen you can stand with the truth and it is up to you to know what to do with it there are people who allow the truth change them like john there are people who were afraid of the truth and ran away like peter there are those who we're making money out of the truth rather than being changed by it like judas it is your choice to know what to do with the truth some make money out of it others run away from it because of the hardness of the truth is that true but others allow themselves to be changed by it so tonight very briefly we have a few minutes and this will be will begin today and then we'll wrap up tomorrow why do i take this time to come and spend two days to teach number one because it's a spiritual responsibility number two it is a communication of my passion my love for you and my sincere desire to see everyone 
rise beyond the limitations that have come as a result of background you see that once people are exposed to an atmosphere of truth they become dangerous people positively speaking just pick anybody whether a villager whether whatever it is comes from a hamlet comes from a city comes from wherever you just keep the people and expose them to truth and let their hearts be open and i show you a people like like an arrow that is being sharpened ready to be shot from the quiver of a professional it does not matter any nation any tribe any tongue i have preached this a thousand times that the difference between any two people the difference between the quality of their life and the degree to which their lives are able to excel and serve the purposes of the kingdom is not the love of god for the same lord is rich unto all god loves an american the way he loves an european he loves an asian the way he loves someone in zaria or nigeria or any village somewhere across the world there is no problem about the love of god the difference is number one access to light the difference between any two people the difference between you and the person you admire the difference between you and your future is number one the level of methodical approach to light spiritual illumination alongside the corresponding transformation that comes from that light that is the first difference number two the level of relationships that come in honor of that transformed version of you because there are relationships that honor transformation is that true yes so your connections change to match your transformation and gives you a higher leverage towards life and destiny and then number three the kind and the dimension of grace that is at work in your life this is what differentiates people that's it if you put a dead body from america you put another dead body from europe you put a dead body from high in the world, you put a dead body from your village or my village you put a dead body from one african nation you don't call it a white dead body you don't call it a black dead body you don't call it an european dead body no they are all dead bodies is that true so the difference is not the color of skin the difference is not even just the privileges that people have with respect to what god provides those things are inconsequential it doesn't matter how you start there is a provision where you can rise and you can catch up do you believe what i'm sharing with you yes sir but we do not just rise by intention it takes more than intention it takes light arise shine isaiah 60 and verse 1 for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you hallelujah so let's touch on just a very simple word we'll be here for just a few minutes and then we'll wrap up for tonight pray in the spirit in one minute and ask the lord to open your eyes every opportunity to learn is an opportunity to rise lord i am ready to rise leaving this old level to a higher one are you praying the hearing ear oh god and the seeing eye in the name of jesus transit me by your word transit me by your power in jesus name it is written part one matthew chapter four and verse four while considering the topic it is written exploring the power that is in the word of god and also exploring the dynamics of engaging the word of god for profitable living it is written matthew 
chapter 4 and verse 4 but he the he there being jesus this was the story of his temptation remember when he was driven by the spirit the bible declares he went and fasted for 40 days and night and afterwards he was unhungered the bible says and satan came to tempt him and he said if you are the son of god turn this stone to bread and jesus replied it is written do you know why it was written so that it cannot be changed it is an ordinance it is a law that man this is not applicable to angels it is written man shall not live wow the first time we see from scripture that jesus is talking about living pay attention now he's talking about living not just life he's talking about living and according to scripture that's what we call the law of first mention is that true that the first the context with which a word is introduced or a particular personality introduces that word that becomes the context that you will use except otherwise when it now becomes a prophetic statement so Jesus is now talking about living the first recommendation he's giving us towards living he says man shall not live by bread alone that means the quality of your life in this kingdom is not just dependent on the food that you eat he's not just talking of the old testament and all of that no 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 he was very direct bread a typology of food that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word how many words every, every word that proceeds from the mouth of god including the one you are hearing every word that proceeds from the mouth of god has capacity to improve my living every word that proceeds from the mouth of god has capacity to improve my living the life we have been called into is a life of victory and a life of glory please listen to me believers make sure that on no account for as long as you live would you ever accept a defeated life make sure on no account no matter what has happened is happening or will ever happen in your life i want you to settle it in your life that you have been called to a life of glory and a life of excellence this is true from scripture he brought many sons by his death to glory john chapter 10 and verse 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy he says but i am come this is why i came that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly jesus is speaking now the thief comes to steal the thief does not come to advise the thief does not come to suggest the thief does not come to partner anytime you see him he has the singular assignment of stealing killing and destruction but jesus said i am come anytime you see me i am come who is the i the word every time the word comes it comes to give you life and it comes to give you abundant life that means don't fight it and don't be afraid every time you see the word coming it comes to give life and it comes to give abundant life we have been called to a life of victory we have been called to a life of glory now thanks be to god which causes us to triumph always do you believe this yes once you are believing this your destiny may not look like it once you are believing this your finances may not look like it once you are believing it whilst you are believing this the call of god upon your life may not even look like it but let god be true and every man including your situation a liar no vision speaks at the beginning 
the vision speaks in the end so it's up to you to believe regardless my background regardless the limitations around my life or otherwise i believe that in the name of jesus i have been called into a life of victory you have to believe this it looks very basic this is why many people keep losing in life because if the foundation be destroyed doesn't matter what you build on it we have been called into a life of victory so that even whilst you see temporal struggles whilst you see temporal failures whilst you see temporal setbacks you do not let those things deter you because you have been called into a life of victory do you believe that yes sir the bible says we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ but accessing and walking in the reality of that experience depends on your encounter with the word of god accessing and walking in the reality of this victorious life that you have been called to live it does not just depend on the love of god his love is not in doubt it depends on your encounter with the word of god the logos of god so i may be called to be a mighty man of god I may be called to be a mighty kingdom financier. I may be called to be a mighty leader, a politician, a great businessman. I may be called and raised by God to be the solution to the challenge of your family or whatever problem. Just believing and knowing that God has singled you out does not mean you will live a victorious life. You must encounter the word of God. And this is our assignment tonight. I want to show you a bit as a way of recap what is contained in the word of god then i now show you the dynamics of engaging the word for victory because many believers know the potency that is in the world but many believers do not know how to engage the word you know that if you are to make rice you are to cook rice maybe fried rice no no let me call something easier that i think i know what and what what is easier than fried rice? He's saying spaghetti. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. But are we still together? So let's assume that you want to cook rice, fried rice or whatever it is. Is that true? Just knowing the ingredients does not mean you will produce a good meal. Is that true even if you don't know the ingredients they can help you to buy it it is the combination that is the difference between a chef a chef does not bring anything necessarily strange it is the same thing you have been using but it is how he uses it ah, the same scripture you have been quoting the same Bible you are holding is what someone is using to produce extraordinary results it is not that there's another verse that is given and say you just hide and i'll give you this verse no it is the same verse it is the same prayer is the same god is the same angels is the same holy ghost is the same wicked men is the same planet earth your result depends on your understanding the dynamics of engaging the word there is nothing that is particularly new or unique for you no it is your understanding of the word of god that creates your difference write this down what is in the word of god or what is the word of god i'll give you three points and then we'll begin to deal a bit in some other matters of the word number one i have taught you here and, and let me recap that the word of god is an expression of god himself write it down the word of God is an expression of God himself. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word was God. So the word is an expression of God himself. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 13. Revelations 19 and verse 13. 
talking about the rider upon the white horse he says and he was clothed with a vesture that was dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god so the word of god is not just a book the word of god is a person jesus the christ of god is called the word of god first john chapter 1 and verse 2 first john chapter 1 and verse 2 it says for the life was manifested and we have seen it and we bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifest unto us when you read from verse 1 to 2 it tells you how that this life was the word of god that word that became life and is now manifest to us so the word of god is an expression of god himself but more more um would i say in a greater sense the word of god is an expression of god's thoughts and god's character the word of god that's the first thing we are still on point one yes it is an expression of god but in 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 a greater detail it is an expression of god's thoughts and god's character comes from the word logos the thoughts of a man that seeks expression the word of god contains the thoughts of god contains the character of god number two the word of god represents listen now this is a very serious one the word of god represents the boundary of god's commitment to the believer the word of god represents the boundary of god's commitment please write it and look up the word of god represents the boundary of god's commitment to the believer let me have your attention please please look at this stage if you can whatever you can see there if i tell you come and show me the boundary of this stage you will be right by standing here is that true and you'll be right by standing here that means anywhere outside of this place you are not on the stage again is that true it cannot be said you are on the stage right here i can't be standing there and say i'm on the stage so this is the boundary of the stage that's how the word of god is you know the word of god tells you how far god can be committed to you he can never be committed to the saints outside of the jurisdiction of his word so it is profitless to attempt to do business with god outside of the scope of his word his very nature does not allow him to cooperate with you if at all you will experience anything outside of the boundary of god's word it is mercy to bring you back to the boundary of his word but it is within the boundary of scripture that you can walk with god do you know why this is important because in an attempt to excel in an attempt to live a profitable life the bible tells us there is a way that seemeth right unto a man i hope you know that there are different methods that people are inventing there is the one that came from demons there is the one that came from culture there is the one that came from the pride of men there is the one that came from the ignorance of men there is the one that came from imbalance of men all of these roads all attempt and propose to you a great future can i tell you this as powerful and well-meaning as the communicators of these truths might be it is only the dimension that is within the scope of the word that can secure God's commitment I give you an instance and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm teaching us this is hope Kenneth Copeland right from the days of his youth he found in scripture from Kenneth Hagin and the rest the power of faith and its ability to provide victory in the life of a believer and that it comes by believing and engaging the word that was his conviction and he would speak the word in a very childlike way is that true 
and continue to speak the word oh in the name of jesus i am healthy i am sound i am whole i will live long i will live 120 years and he keeps speaking and it looked childish when he began to say it, there were many people who said this thing is too childish there are other advanced ways we have found and he told them you people will all fade away and i will remain because not because i trust myself i know that this is true when he started this he was kenneth e higgins pilot this man is in his 80s today his eyes are still 2020 vision he is still standing strong blessed his wife is still by his side every one of his children is born again they are born again filled with the holy ghost serving in ministry successful themselves and he's still saying what he said when he was young. I am blessed. He had, he had even gotten, the last time I heard him speak, he had already gotten the year he will pass on. He has chosen the year because he believes that he has the power to choose it. So he chose it and he announced it to everybody that it will not be less than this. No matter what your fears are, a man who started saying something from his 20s and he's now getting close to 90 and he's still speaking it would be stupid for anybody to believe that that person does not know what he's doing we sell drugs that are 45 percent chance of working and we believe them we sell something that is 80 we say this thing is 65 percent chance that your headache will go away and you still believe it and here is something that has been proven through decades be careful what you call basic be careful what you call advance the moment it steps out of the boundary of the word of god you may be impressed with what you are doing but i tell you you will waste your time have you seen students that the teacher will give an example list six things and the person will list only two and explain them and at the end of it you will get two because you were asked to list and the mark allocated for listing six was six they did not ask you to explain you listed two and thought it will cover for the remaining four you don't know and you explain them pto you turn your page you wrote again at the end of it the man will say this is wonderful but you scored two that is how listen listen i know this is funny but i want you to pay attention to what i'm telling you because you see you will come in with our mirage of pride on what we think is the formula when the fire of god blows through it it's only what is consistent with the word that will be left. And for many people, they are building chaff. Convictions that will not stand the test of time. I am praying that somehow you will believe what I am teaching you. And God is coming to bridge any possibility for wasting your time and your destiny. So that you not drive yourself puffed up in knowledge. I know this. This is, should be the way. No. Listen. When it was time for all the ladies. Remember in the book of Esther? They gathered plenty ladies. And the king was going to choose a wife. I'm sure all the women were rehearsing. What do you think the king would like? And a particular woman said, this man is the one who keeps the king's women. He should know something. He said, sir, what do you think the king would like? And he said, you're a wise woman. You're a villager, but you're on your way to go. Come, let me tell you, do this, that, and that. So you come to God and say, Lord, what does it take to excel? And he says, come, let me show you. Do this, that, and he said, no, I, I don't trust you. I, I think I need to add 10 more things. And God is saying, who is the one who prospers? I am setting an exam for you. And by reason of relationship, I have told you, this is what to answer so that I will pass you. Because I so want you to, go, to move forward. And you left what I taught you and you are reading something else. And then you get zero. It's not my fault. I did my best to help you. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Listen, there are people today who desire to walk in the anointing. They desire to walk in spiritual power, genuine spiritual power. But you will be amazed 
to know how many formulas in the body of Christ have been invented that makes for power and yet while we keep doing those things the sick are still sick out of 10 people on wheelchairs only one person gets up but there were men like T.L. Osborne there were men who went from Africa to any nation they reproduced that result and they wrote books they wrote truths it is true that knowledge is progressive but you must build on what has worked listen listen in the school of the spirit there are no inventors it's a relay you you the, the first law of impartation and followership is to honor the results that are before you it is pride to ignore what has worked before you even if you build upon it honor it first it takes a professor to make a master student become a doctor he will one day be a professor but in the interim if you ignore that man you will never have that phd are you getting what i'm telling you now follow them who through faith and patience have obtained have obtained what did they do with demons demons is not today demons started oppressing us what happened to tl osborne when he came to africa that we have not even received the gospel what happened to Reinhard Bonke as he traveled from place to place? He went to places where they gave him charms. He held it and destroyed it and went back home and slept sound. There was no day that he did not get up and go for a crusade and say because demons attacked him. There was something he believed. Today, with all the exegesis and volumes of teachings about deliverance, volumes of teachings about whatever, demons still oppress us after that meeting volumes of teachings about this we go back and we preach on crusade grounds god is able to do this and while we do it the sick are saying now nah, i believe you all those guys were powerful my goodness my god i had the privilege to be in a reinhard bonke crusade at close proximity and i looked at the man from head to toe there was really nothing there but there was everything there in the name of Jesus Christ blind eyes open wheelchairs and you are hearing shouts as if they are fighting as if it's riot celebrating all kinds of things you will see people rise up from wheelchair who you know medically speaking even if they are up the way their legs shrunk, it should not take the size of their bodies. Go and read the books of T.L. Osborne and see the kinds of miracles these people did. Or this issue of growing out legs and hands that people are just making a joke out of. These were the guys that introduced these dimensions to the body of Christ. Today they have joined the cloud of witnesses. But they left us what God taught them. And we say, nonsense, don't mind them. It was, it was Kenneth Cope, Kenneth E. Hakey, and Ora Roberts. He built Ora Roberts University today. After many years, it is still standing. You enter into that institution, you will be afraid. You will see a hand praying. There is a fire burning from an altitude to tell you that the fire on your altar should remain. There are all kinds of emblems. Those who have been students of these people, we are seeing the results we are producing. Those who have refused to be students and rather inventors are still gallivanting around the world of relevance. There are research institutes and there are inventions that happen in those research institutes. But before the researchers get to that point, they are trained by those who have obtained. Is that true? when they become co-competent personalities then on the strength of their qualification they can now begin to dig further do not trust any new invention until you see how much the individual honored what he met do not trust any new revelation until you see what the individuals did with what they found if i teach you something new and something advanced find out what was my honor for what worked already Today, there are all kinds of inventions that we have, planes, but they are not with dishonor to the right brothers. 
it is an improvement from the foundation of what they did we can now build upon and rise the word of, of god, god represents the boundary of god's commitment can, can i tell you this heaven, heaven and earth will pass away, away. Babies, babies will, will become, become teenagers teenagers, teenagers will, will become adolescents young, young adults midlife and they will become elders the word of god remains you will waste your destiny trying to invent a wheel again the wheel has already been invented it says jeremiah 6 16 give it to us please jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. please give it to us jeremiah 6 16. he said stand thus saith the lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old parts where is the good way just because it is old does not mean that it has stopped being a good way it says and walk therein and ye shall find what rest for your souls my precious people look at me there is a path that leads to victory there is a path that leads to genuine wealth and prosperity that you will lay up gold as dust and not know what to do with it and yet your heart is still inclined to God this life of beating left right and center hustling trying to make ends meet why don't you pay attention and listen to the one who invented the way you are not the first to seek establishment you are not the first to want to do something about your life you are not the first to want to do ministry you are not the first to look for the anointing the bible and history is full of men you were born in a christian family in the bible here there were people who were born idol worshippers and yet they navigated their way until they became custodians of the promise the things that are written aforetime, time they are for our learning so that we through the uh, how does he put it now the comfort of scripture might find hope how did abraham who came from all of the chaldeans as an idol worshiper what path did he take that later got him at the end of the story we see an exalted man who has now become the custodian of the blessing that he became god's idea of what it means to be blessed to the point that in isaiah chapter 51 here's what he said verse 1 and 2 it says look unto abraham your father he is my recommendation on how i transit people through my word to a life of excellence abraham and to sarah that body for i call him alone i blessed him and i increased him is god speaking to us now this is very powerful pay attention to god's word do not try to invent your way submit to the word of god if the word of god tells you this is how to get results obey that word let me tell you this if i ask all of you right now write a prayer request here and i promise you that anything you write will come to pass and somehow you believe it is true more than 80 if not 90 percent of the prayer request will be around the area of finances lord help us is that true the way these times are now they are not really funny i want to serve you but this thing is not allowing me to serve you you see you're already even laughing as i'm saying it and then number two for many people maybe area of purpose i want to find my place in life i'm confused all of these things have been answered already they've been answered already there is a way that it works in this kingdom but you must walk in keeping with the boundary of scripture that way you can guarantee that in the name of the lord i will come into the fullness of what god has said for me can i tell you this you listen to what i'm teaching you by the word you will step into levels of anointing that you never believed you will step into you will step into levels of power you will dumbfound principalities and powers because i told you it is a journey for a long time it will not look like it for a long time 
it will not look like it but can i tell you this if you submit yourself to it meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all number three is god helping us the word of god is a revelation of god's system of operation it's called the wisdom of god the word of god is a revelation of his system of operation how we obtain results in this kingdom the word of god reveals to us how results happen not just that results happen it shows us how they happen again back to cooking there are books that they sell around that teach you how to cook in case you cannot cook is that true and the book the people are careful enough at the back of that book the people may write their qualification oh this one attended this school they attended this one this one so you know that the person you are dealing with is credible then you now turn to page one pounded yam right and vegetable soup this is how you make it happen page two you want all kinds of um, European cuisines and the rest they will teach you how to do it your job is to trust the people don't just look at it as if these people don't know what they are doing what have you cooked first are you seeing that now the book does not just show you it shows you the finished product but then it tells you this is what to do step one do this while you are arguing there say no i know my own way you will still not be able to get it somebody will come with childlike faith and just say i will follow this to the letter step one do this for five minutes you will do it at least let me try it and let it fail step two do it step three now you can add this one now you can add this one and eventually the food the the aroma now starts becoming like the one that he smells somewhere and he says this thing is working and now you add this one you add this one at the end of it he may not quite get it 100 percent but at least he's impressed next tomorrow he will do it again a day will come he will not need to use the book because the book has entered him he does not ignore the book and then one day he can sit down and say wow i appreciate this person but there is something i have learned between this and this the person did not see this but in honor to him now we can improve on it there is something you can introduce in that food are you seeing now so you are improving but not in dishonor to what you met what you met brought you thus far and then the holy ghost in honor of your submission to that truth will now open your eyes to see listen i have told you our children will edit what we now call revelation of our age but if they ignore what we are teaching they will be surprised that they will remain in our yesterday even though they are our future if they listen one day they'll be listening to a koinonia message and i'll be preaching so powerfully and the holy ghost will tell them you see this man did his best with the grace he was given but between this mystery and this mystery he didn't see this one now because you have submitted to honor it let me show you something and it will show you their own message now becomes the improvement of our own are you seeing it now yes a revelation of god's word write this down i've taught you but let's deal with it quickly the word of god contains three things number one promises number two principles number three prophecies the word of god essentially contains three things number one promises don't forget number two principles number three prophecies what are promises god's commitment if you will do this this is what i will do this is my intention for you if you walk in keeping with the conditions that make this manifest write this down 
you only commit God's integrity to perform when you walk in keeping with his promises and his principles you only commit God's integrity to perform when you walk in keeping with his promises and his principles that means that God loves you but the only way to commit God in your life is when you walk in keeping with his promises and his principles now listen how do we engage the word for victory this is what I want to show you now briefly and then we'll wrap up for tonight's session please pay attention because this is where many of us may not understand you understand these things I've shared so far but the missing link for many of us can be translating the Word of God into that experiential manifestation the Bible says the Word became flesh and it dwelt among us and we beheld that means it should not just remain a mystery in the realm of the spirit it should translate into the quality of your health it should translate into the quality of your prosperity the quality of your spiritual life the quality of your advancement in life are we together number one the first key when you want to engage the word of god pay attention please when you want to engage the word of god for victory your first assignment is to find scriptures find scriptures that apply to your areas of concern find scriptures that apply to your area of concern apostle it looks like all doors are closed it looks like nothing is working in my life every door I try to open is closed so you journey with the spirit go and find from scripture where were closed doors open in the Bible are you seeing now the formula behind the story of that closed door I taught you that the Bible does not profit you until you find the mystery behind the stories mysteries are hidden in stories if you just read the story and Abraham did this and Samson did this and Paul did this it has not blessed you you have to look with the eyes of the spirit then you will find the mystery behind the story that's the profit from it so if I were you and I'm, I want to do something about closed doors in my life I go to scripture at least one or two scriptures is that true there are many many scriptures that show you how closed doors were open the most classic of them I can use two doors number one was the door of the grave whether for Lazarus or for Jesus himself it was once closed the door of the grave for Lazarus the tomb was closed but under a condition it was open and it came out so I will study it Jesus himself the door the tomb was closed and it was opened and it came out are we together I go to Acts chapter 12 and I read there how that Peter for Peter it was even three gates that closed him and all of them open so I now begin now I found a scripture so open doors is a possibility so I will no longer be asking God do you want to open doors that question has already gone because I found it in scripture are we together and Jesus the same yesterday the moment you find it in scripture there's no need asking whether God wants to do it for this promise is for you and your children and your children's children as many as are afar off are we together now so I know that God wants to open doors now the next thing is to understand the dynamics what was done you don't you are not reading for open doors then suddenly you say let me pause a bit and read songs of solomon mm -mm. you are being distracted let me turn and read leviticus how they made the tabernacle except the holy ghost takes you there stay and study the area where you are trusting to find light in okay scene one peter was in the prison bound hand and feet 
is that true the doors were closed what happened the next thing the bible tells you is that prayer was made by the church unto god for him so i write i'm combining my ingredients now at least i want to know what ingredients are there first so number one i see prayer are we together i now write it down number two an angel came so i see the angelic ministry i'm writing down are you seeing it now an angel came for jesus rolled away the stone an angel came so i know that for opening of any door there is the role of angels there i expect it to be part of it i'm showing you how to make the word of god work there is a part of the equation of open doors that men cannot be involved in it takes the ministry of angels so i know what is the project to scatter that door that is open but how do you how do you engage it I've, I've written prayer now is that true i've written the angelic ministry and when they came the bible says when they tapped peter peter woke up so i see that discernment is also part of it you see that now because he had to wake up if he was asleep he would not know that his salvation had come and the bible says as they were parting peter through the doors he thought he was in a vision so you need discernment because the person god will use to open the door for you may come in a form that you may not appreciate so you need discernment now i'm writing all of these things by the time i find it now lord open my eyes in my situation now how do i combine it you are not paul you are not peter so now you are using the same ingredients but you want to make something out of it now that becomes applicable for you ah this is where the holy ghost comes you are brooding over every darkness you are causing lights to shine from darkness holy ghost is brooding over every darkness you are causing now the assignment of the holy spirit was to make what happened in the bible happen in your life and he needs to now customize those ingredients because there are things you write there that may not necessarily be applicable and whilst you are praying how does this door open and the holy ghost can tell you begin to declare the ministry of angels you may not know what you are doing in the name of jesus are they not ministering spirits sent to minister today that be the heirs of salvation you are speaking the word as you are speaking you are releasing their ministry now you may not know and then you are now praying and the holy ghost will tell you everything men will always play a role it was jesus told men roll away the stone before he asked lazarus to come out so those who roll stones angels can roll stones men can also roll stones are we together now they can roll it spiritually while men roll it physically and so you can pray and god will tell you send this person a text and just use honor this is the man appointed by god to roll away that stone ordinarily that person will not listen to you but because what came to you is rema from god just before you call or you text the holy ghost begins to speak to him living is not profitable until you empower people the holy ghost is preparing you see how he's acting it he's preparing him to honor that text he begins to put a thought of impacting lives you should not you are too wealthy to just remain at this level and then suddenly your text comes and honor is the key for access honor is a triumphant usher it can lead you with dignity into the heart of any man and any system listen and whilst you are sitting yes who is this oh i'm this and that. oh have you got a job yet tomorrow come to my office first thing in the morning and then the moment you are done with that conversation just when you want to go to bed god says no 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 in the realm of the spirit satan can hinder men you need to engage right now and in this one you are not just going to pray you've prayed in tongues already 
get worship song and let it be with a dance that you seal this i'm showing you how it works for people so you are now dancing and rejoicing and celebrating i will exalt you you have lifted me above my enemies and while you are doing that there are angels fortifying the bible said the angel rolled the stone and sat on it let me see who will roll it back listen by the next day you have sent favor ahead of you and the man sees you and you step into prepared blessings and the door suddenly opens and when people come to meet you and say my god we can't believe this how how did this blessing come to your life and you tell them it's god oh it's, yes it's god oh but there are dynamics to it in the beginning god the word the challenge with many of us is we do not know how to engage the word for victory so what we do is we just know somewhere in scripture there is a verse for prosperity somewhere in scripture there is a verse for authority over demons somewhere in scripture there is a verse for this and that but the dynamics of it we do not know i want your life to so command results so command results to a degree that you will bring glory to the name of the Lord not just for the marketing of flesh my brothers and sisters please listen to me I know what I'm saying I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables you listen to what I'm teaching you by God and by grace your life will excel in a way that will make you afraid you want the anointing in your life and you just blindly go i think you are anointed pray for me no no the anointing does not start with laying on of hands the anointing starts from scripture go and search the scripture there were people who started with zero anointing and by the end of their life and their experience they were marvelously anointed start searching be like a spiritual archaeologist journey with the holy ghost how did he start i have found david my servant and with my holy oil i have anointed him aha you have found it so once upon a time david was not anointed what did david do holy ghost opened my eyes and here's what you, god will show you i have found david but it took a long time to find my servant until david became my servant oil did not come on his head the god will open your eyes i have found david but i could not anoint david the anointing is for my servants so i took david from being just david until he became my servant the journey of the cave of adulam the journey of breaking and making that's what turns david into my servant and when he became my servant he was now qualified for that holy oil ah lord what is the secret of being marvelously lifted by you and you begin to search in prayer and he leads you my son give me your heart give me your heart give me your heart lord but i've been giving you my money nonsense give me your heart give me your heart what is in your heart your reputation what is in your heart the entirety of your self-worth what is in your heart your ambition what is in your heart your sense of honor give it to me it's not saying remove something from your chest and give me give me everything and you begin that journey with him lord i do not have the power to take isaac but I give you permission to take Isaac and God says that's what I want let's begin that journey and at the end of it it will look like your life is a miserable life until God turns with you and says because you have done this to me I swear and I vow in my name that in blessing I will bless you in multiplying I will multiply you you see that at that point you don't just walk with God by emotions again your sacrifice has become a covenant this one is more than just power this is covenant 
psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice at that point god will swear a vow on your life and say there is no meeting you will go to that i will not be there to defend you that one is god is it's not old testament new testament this is between you and god by reason of your sacrifice he will swear a vow with you and until you get to that realm you cannot do much for the kingdom many people wonder why sometimes all of these marvelous things that God does happen doesn't matter where doesn't matter who it's not because I'm so much of anything important it is because behind this you see is blood dripping blood that came from death blood that came from sacrifice once God has sworn upon you it remains so until you see his face it's a difficult thing to get God to swear a blessing over your life but if God does swear a blessing this is what our fathers taught us this is what God did for people like Ora Roberts this is what God did for the generals he swore a blessing he gave he gave William Branham a covenant that there is an angel that will walk with you and William Branham will stand on a crusade ground with many people there and say God told me that everywhere I stand his angel will come and he will remain there until the angel appears he will say the angel has come and all of a sudden spectacular manifestations of the gifts of the spirit This word is more than enough to bring everything to you that your life desires any other formula given to you outside this word I give you a guarantee in advance is a waste of time don't sojourn for many years only to return back to where you left the Word of God let me show you something that will bless you we're going to pray John chapter 1 verse 3 please read with me everybody one two read stop all things all things prosperity made by him longevity made by him influence made by him spiritual fire and fervency made by him relevance made by him all things were made by him and without him without means outside of his participation was not anything made let me tell you what the devil is deceiving our generation into doing listen my dear people Here's what the devil deceives us into doing. This church thing is a waste of time. Just leave this thing and use your common sense and face your future. All things were made by him and outside of him was not anything made. Don't wait until you are 50, you are 60 to suddenly find out you are wrong. Learn now. If my destiny will ever be made, it has to be in partnership with the word of God. There are arrows that fly by day. There are noisome pestilences. We live in times where 
people have been lashed economically and they need the Lord to arise for them in ways and dimensions that not many of them know how to go about. Listen to me. My brothers and my sisters, heaven and earth will pass away. But this word you see abides forever. This is what our fathers taught us. Many of them lived, they ran this race with scripture. They were in the bush and all they had was a scripture. And from that scripture, Smith Wigglesworth found here in this scripture, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do, and greater works. And that man who fixes shoes, that was all he was doing. He was a cobbler, but he found this scripture, and it turned a shoemaker into an apostle of faith. I perceive that God is no respecter of persons but in every nation in every nation whoever calls upon him or whoever serves him is accepted by him that means it is not happening because you are in Nigeria or not in Nigeria no the Lord is my shepherd if the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want why because he can make me lie down in green pastures he can lead me beside the still waters he can even restore me he can guide me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake then he says though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death my comfort is that you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me he says you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies anointing my head with oil listen if your word study life has died i want you to know for sure according to the authority of scripture that your life stopped moving forward the day you close your bible i assure you on that you may have a semblance of advancement weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah is worthy to open there is a relationship between tears and closing the book when you close the book your tears begin the only way to weep not is when the book is opened for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed he is worthy qualified to open the book and unlock the seven seals thereof hear me this ministry you see even though God has granted me grace for unusual and uncommon encounters, I have never placed my faith on supernatural encounters. Supernatural encounters did not create the world. It was the world. It doesn't matter if I go to heaven 12 times, my faith will not be in heaven. Heaven is a place. The world is God. Man shall not live. By bread alone ah. you are here right now as you're looking at me you're saying apostle you don't know my life and you don't know my situation I don't have a helper in my destiny maybe my dad is late maybe my mom is late there is nobody to help me as I am now I don't even know how I will rise find comfort my dear ones the Bible is full of people who sojourned this earth unassisted by men but when they found the Word of God it transformed everything about their life spiritually there are many of us who believe that the call of God upon our lives will require certain superior levels of the anointing but you're not going to get into that just wishing I know one day the anointing will fall upon me no you have to engage the word in the beginning the word not anointing in the beginning the word not prayer prayer is a derivative of the word anointing is a derivative of the word signs and wonders are derivatives of the word return back to the place of the word place value on the word of God place your life upon it and you know that you place your life on something secured every destiny helper 
that is scattered around your life and is needed for your life and your destiny it is the word of god that brings them it is the magnet that will bring them and can i tell you don't ever say i am in a i am in zaria it's not true god can pick them from anywhere you believe what i am telling you anywhere go and lose the coat and bring it and if any man asks you tell him the master hath need of it We are made by the word. We live in a world where people say, I am self-made. There is nothing like self-made in the kingdom. You are demon-made and ritual-made and charm-made and yoke-made and curse-made or you are word-made. All things were made by him and without him, was not anything made listen to me the future version of you is the word of god that will make it it's not time that will make the future version of you it is the word the degree to which you believe the word great fathers like papa copeland they would tell people to carry their bible and jokingly this is my bible it is god's word to me I believe in what it says I am I can do what it says I can do and so on and so forth and it sounded childish and many mature people have not produced one tenth result because they are too mature for the simplicity of the word oh may we ever tremble at his word may his word remain ever fresh may you not treat the word of God like you treat familiar people that every time you open the Bible you don't just oh John I know this one I can even recite it till today till tomorrow till forever every time i'm about to open the word of god there is excitement in my spirit because i know my eyes are about to see and from what i see others will see too and so i am happy not just for me i am happy for the sight of others too genesis 13 we're going to pray genesis 13 from verse 14 nobody like you lord nobody like you lord oh, there's nobody like you lord nobody like you lord i wish i had the liberty to begin to tell you the testimonies and the things that God continues to do in this ministry it's just that because of the maturity levels of people and because of the times that we live in sometimes it's just safe to just give glory to God and say God is doing great things but my brothers and sisters these are the things that will cause the ears of men to say what is this the Bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it come into the heart of man what god has in store for them that love him but the holy spirit is able to reveal it to us you see watch this matthew 13 i mean genesis 13 and the lord said to abram after that lot had separated from him lift up now your eyes what was the first thing he lifted not his feet his eyes and look from the place where you are not the place you want to be from the place where you are lift up your eyes from that place of poverty from that place of spiritual bankruptcy from that place of of irrelevance if i will use that expression lift up your eyes and he says where thou art look from the place where thou art northward southward eastward westward next verse for all the land which thou seest not the land which is available all the land which thou seest to thee i will give it unto thy seed anything you see will outlive you your seed must benefit from it it says for as long as you can see it 
I will give you in a way that your seed will also have it forever. Lift up your eyes. See. Verse 16. We are reading to 17. I will make your seed as the dust of the earth. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. 17. Hallelujah. Arise. Now that you have seen, walk through the land. You don't start by moving. You start by seeing. Walk through the land in the length of it and the breadth of it for I will give it unto you. Listen, the problem is many people start moving and acting without seeing. The assignment, listen to me, the assignment of the spirit of faith is to make you see what God is saying. God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, will say, you cannot doubt what you see. You can doubt what you hear. How many of you have picked up a call to answer a call and you suspect it's someone and you say, who is that? And he says, ah, your voice has changed, but not what you see. Can you say I'm wearing white? Am I wearing white? Because you can see. The same way you can see physically and it gives you confidence nobody will move to a closed door with his eyes open because you can see is that true so you know you need to open the door that's how it is spiritually and that's how it is by the word let this word become your new eyes that you see through the word if you can see it that God has said it and then you find out listen seeing it does not just mean finding it in the world seeing it also means find out the principles that commit god over that issue find out what you must do to commit god there is always something there is a participatory role that you have as far as committing god is concerned you want to be great you want to excel. You want to rise beyond your status quo. You want to rise beyond the limitation of your territory. See. And you go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you to do. Right? That I will exalt you above the nations of the earth. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. And all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. When he was speaking it, he was not just speaking it to Israelites. Because we are that seed. The seed of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I believe that I've been called to a life of grace. A life of glory. I believe it doesn't matter the witches the wizards it does not matter the orchestrations of darkness that befall the day i know by the spirit of god that in partnership with the word and in partnership with the spirit that i will live a victorious life serving the purposes of the kingdom and excelling while i do so this is my conviction you make the word of god become your frame of reference are we together now And then you commit God by walking in keeping with the principles that make it happen. Many of us here, I wish I had the time. Well, let's see what happens tomorrow. We still have a session tomorrow. Many of us want to rise. You want to rise out of a life of mediocrity, a life of poverty, a life of failure. My brothers and my sisters, there is a way to do it. If you think the way is business, think again. If you think the way is just buying and selling, think again. No. It is not what you do. It's primarily who you know. Then what you become by reason of that knowledge. Then what you do from the standpoint of that becoming. Are you seeing now? Everything starts with knowledge. Let's round up with this scripture for tonight. Daniel 11.32 Daniel 11, 32. Make it higher for me. 
it says the B part but the people that do know everybody say no one more time say no say knowledge that's the beginning the ultimate goal is exploits but here's how it starts knowledge then if they know they shall be strong so they will be knowledge becoming then doing equals to exploits knowledge of god and then his ways transformation by that encounter and then the wisdom that comes from that transformed version of you you now walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise it will be equal to a life of exploits everywhere that i go everything that i do I'll hear in sanana. everywhere that i go everything that i do i'll hear in sanana. That becomes your life. Listen, you will be an overflowing bank of grace when you understand this. The effulgence of the beauty and the glory of God's grace upon your life. Let me tell you, you will be the first spectator of that sight. You, your own life. I know what I'm telling you. It is true. how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about doing good you don't just do good there is something that must be in place for you to do good healing all day that were oppressed of the devil listen to me from this night's meeting I want you as we we'll pray for a few minutes make a decision that your life is not going to be the way you met it make up your mind i'm tired of giving excuses about my life i've been giving excuses is because i'm in zaria is because i'm this and that refuse the word of god is an advantage it is true I'll hear in sanana, everywhere that i go everything that i do i'll hear in sanana. The wonder working power of the word when the word finds expression in your heart and it turns you into a sign and a wonder spiritually you are a sign and a wonder financially every aspect of your life let me give us one scripture to end tonight this is my desire and this is my prayer I know that many of us as far as loving Jesus and serving him is concerned, I testify that many of us love him. I give that credit to you. I know by the Spirit, by the grace of God, this is a house that loves Jesus. We love him in different degrees, but sincerely, I can stand boldly to tell the world that this is a house that loves Jesus so passionately. Our love for Jesus has been proven again and again, but in addition to your love for jesus and your desire to make him known to the nations god desires that you excel in your life he wants you to rise to a point where your life becomes a testament of god's glory and anything short of this truth do not receive it whilst you serve him whilst you live for him whilst you exalt his name and declare his praise to the nations he wants your life to experience the goodness the glory the power of god because that quality of your life is also a message genesis 24 1 genesis 24 verse 1 genesis 24 verse 1 everyone please read and abraham was old hold on that means he lived long everybody say long life and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed joshua selman in all things 
and the Lord see it is what you see that is given not what your neighbor sees not what your family sees as far as your eyes can see the possibilities that the Word of God constructs for you becomes your inheritance the portion you have seen is the portion you step into not the portion available the portion you see if all you see from the word is an excelling spiritual life that's all you will get if all you see in the word of god is a prosperous life and you don't see a spiritually vibrant life you will get prosperity at the detriment of your spiritual work if all you see in the word is divine health that's all you will get but if you see everything everything that makes god god spiritual fire vibrancy in your life vibrancy in your finances and you say god this is what i have seen he says unto you because you have seen it this becomes your inheritance let us not allow our children suffer because we did not see well son of man what seest thou the root the shoot of an almond tree he says you have seen correctly as a result of what you have seen i will hasten my word to perform it what word the one you have seen jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 10 to 12 the whole context is from verse 5 to 12 jeremiah aside from your biological parents aside from your spouses for those who are married believe me when i tell you it will be very difficult for you to find a single human being that loves you more than me but as much as i love you even if i feed you i can't swallow for you I can't digest it for you is that true even for patients who doctors use another means to get food to them when it gets to the body your body must be alive to digest it I pray for you all the time and I want you to know that every time I come and bring the Word of God like I've always done it's not because I'm looking for anything for myself. No. It is a passion to see that everyone can rise. And that for as long as I am alive, I will not sit down and watch the devil destroy anybody's life in mediocrity and make you fail and live a defeated life. Seated in this place are people who represent the next generation of what God is doing. The same way the baton was passed to us and now we are running as faithful as he granted us as he's granted us grace it is my assignment and my responsibility under god to see to it that there is continuity to what god is doing my beloved people hear me you are greater than what you see that you are the problem is your sight every time you look at your room and you look at rain dripping every time you look at your shoe we have been taught mundane parameters look at what is happening to your spirit man look at what is happening to your mind that is the real wealth what is happening around you is temporal it will change the word of god has such a force it can superimpose upon it provided you are engaging it provided you are engaging it sitting down and merely hoping that life will evolve itself into victory for you is flattery it will not happen that way you will be intentional three prayer points tonight very quickly our time is up prayer point number one restore my fire for the word restore my fire for the word restore my fire for the word restore my appetite for the word restore my fire for the word someone is praying restore my appetite for the word don't be distracted the overflow spray following online pray man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of god
please pray pray se la caparagato se de gele bakata prandas kata bakata prateke de balakata heaven and earth will pass away but your word abides forever No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No one you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. Are you praying for your destiny? No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No one you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. A restoration of fire for the world beyond reading one verse per day, beyond just morning devotion. Get Hallelujah. Please look up. Prayer point number two. You are going to declare the word of God that you know over every aspect of your life. Don't declare your problem. Don't declare what is wrong. Every scripture, no matter how little or much you know, you are going to open your mouth, place the word of God upon your destiny and leave it there. And watch the reaction that happens. Place the word of God. Is someone declaring? Gentiles, come to my light. Kings, to the brightness of my rising. In the name of Jesus, I arise, I shine. My light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm planted in the house of God. I flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, I am fat and flourishing. My gates are continually open, never closed to receive the forces of the Gentiles. My path is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even on to the perfect day. A thousand four by my side, ten thousand by my right side. None shall harm me. With my eyes will I see and behold the reward of the wicked. The Lord stands by me like a mighty terrible warrior. Pray, declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. I rise up by revelation, the glory that excels working in my life in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I go from strength to strength, from grace to grace, from power to power, strength to strength, grace to grace. I am blessed because I fear the Lord. My seed remain mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright in my life are blessed. Wealth and riches remain in my house. My righteousness endures forever. The light of God shines upon my head, shines upon my feet.
Don't be tired. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Declare long life. I declare longevity. I declare the fullness of my days. I serve the Lord. So he blesses my bread and my water. He takes sickness away from me. The fullness of my days. I fulfill. Goodness and mercy. Follow me. Goodness and mercy. Follow me. Goodness and mercy. Follow me. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me falls for my sake. Are you declaring? The Lord gives me a wisdom and a mouthpiece that no one can can say nor resist the wisdom of God is at work in my life favor access to the hearts of kings access to the hearts of nobles don't be tired one or two more minutes declare speak over your finances in the name of jesus i operate by the wisdom of the spirit i know what to do the lord is my shepherd i refuse to be in work he shall keep his angels charge over me they bear me up on their wings lest i dash my foot against a stone the lord will deliver me from six things in the name of jesus in famine i will laugh he will deliver me from the spotted tongues of men because i have a covenant with the stone i am exalted by the spirit of god Exalted, the power of God is at work in me. Certain signs and wonders through my life. Jesus is glorified through my life. Jesus is glorified in and through this ministry. Men glorify God in me. Men glorify God in me. My light so shines before men that they see the good works of the Lord in and through my life and glorify the Father in heaven. Everything works in my hands. Nothing dies in my hands. I am a life-giving spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Declare from glory to glory, from grace to grace, my prayer life on fire, my word study life on fire. I continue to transcend, to, to, to contend for transformation by the Spirit of God, superior belief systems, superior versions of myself in the name of Jesus, the gates of cities, the gates of nations, the gates of territories are open for me for the sake of His name upon my life. Don't be tired. You are the redeemed of the Lord. Say so. You are the blessed of the Lord. Say so. You are the anointed of the Lord. Say so. You are the lifted of the Lord. Say so. You are the favored of the Lord. Say so. Declare so. Proclaim so. Decree so. Go ahead and pray. The anointing of the spirit, the grace of God is mightily upon my life. Walking wonders, walking wonders, the grace of God. Work in my life in the name of Jesus. I'm an effort of the power of God, the wisdom of God, the grace of God in the name of Jesus. Supernatural influence from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. Ever loving Jesus, ever serving Jesus, ever living for Jesus.
It was written so that it would not be changed. It was written so that it would not be changed. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. Many things have been written and I believe them. I want you to leave this place this night not just saying I came to church I want you to leave this place this night with confident assurance it has been written concerning me and I engage it with understanding until my life becomes an effulgence of victory in the name of Jesus Christ give me one minute to make an altar call it always starts with Jesus. There are people listening to me here. You are in this auditorium. Probably you are visitors coming for the first time. There are others who have been here. And you are saying, Apostle, while the word of God was coming forth, the Lord began to speak to me about the need for a meaningful relationship with Jesus. More than religion, more than church. 
and there are others who are saying apostle i love jesus but the way my life is i need to start afresh wherever you are aside from overflow three that i may just request that you move to the front of your screen if you are here or you are outside it's my joy to lead you to jesus wherever you are please leave your seat quickly and come and stand before me receive that boldness don't be ashamed are there people coming let's celebrate them i believe there has to be someone that god is speaking to god bless you god bless you celebrate them as they come those coming from outside clear the way for them god bless you don't sit back when the holy ghost is saying come and join them i believe that there are people that the lord is speaking to hallelujah let's give one more minute are there people who god is calling if you are coming from outside please quickly quickly make your way overflow three move to your projector stand outside and then for those who are following online you can participate in this prayer let's celebrate them as they come god bless you god bless you hallelujah i appreciate every single one of you thank you so much my dear ones for coming i want to lead you to make this prayer it is the greatest prayer you will ever make in your life if there's anyone joining them please come quickly and stand god bless you lift your right hand every one of you and say this after me say it loud and clear with every sense of conviction from your heart say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus tonight i declare that i believe in you you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you were raised up for my justification this night i make jesus my savior my lord and my king i declare that i am a recipient of eternal life i also declare that i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i reign in life from today i move forward ever and backward never in jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones and as many who are connecting following from around the world and those who are in the overflows they have come to declare your lordship over their lives by the authority of scripture i declare their sins forgiven and in the name of jesus i declare that the lord gives you a new beginning from tonight you are recipients of god's life god's grace god's power i decree and declare in the name of jesus that from today you go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken forever over your life in the name of jesus christ welcome to the family of god in jesus name i pray hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.